I just had an argument with this guy over who's the all-time RBI leader on the Giants. He says Willie Mays, I say Mel Ott. So I took out my little Franklin Digital Baseball Encyclopedia and looked it up, and I was right. It's Mel Ott by one RBI. Just one example of how a computing device can help solve a baseball problem. In fact, computers are being used everywhere in baseball these days, from databases for coaches, statistical software for rotisserie league managers, and game simulations. Today, we'll take a look at baseball software on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. With me today is Mike Bloom of IntelliMedia sure. Sports. Mike, I'm going to ask you to show us IntelliPlay Baseball in just a second. I want to show you this first. This is a new CD-ROM from Newsweek Interactive called The Business of Baseball. I have it up on the monitor here. It's just loaded with video, audio, charts, photos, all kinds of stuff. So let's just take a look at one of these video clips. For example, here's a nice piece of film from long ago on Babe Ruth. When Babe Ruth was first offered a baseball contract, he gasped. You mean someone's going to pay me for playing baseball? Yeah, if only he realized what they get paid now, right? All right, and teleplay baseball was meant to teach kids how to be a better player, right? Absolutely. So and what do we have? We start by showing them their strike zone. Your strike zone. So this is for the batter to understand what the strike zone is. Where to expect that ball to come across the plate. Learn to adjust to all the pitches hmm. that fall within this area. And what do we teach the kid here? We're going to show him how to adjust to the pitch. Okay, so you're going to load another video for this yes, next little lesson. Yes, we're actually use a when you're adjusting pitcher the speed and a batter. Of the pitch, it is important that you take your stride at the release point of the pitch. Hmm. Your body is then prepared to hit the fastest pitch that is offered to you. And you are planted and you can in a see firm we've got several position different yeah. so that you can Views react here. to a pitch And we see him awesome. start the stride right when it leaves his hand. Yeah. Now what you might want do? to see this with somebody who's bunting. Okay. And... Here we go. We got the bunts coming got up at the, the bottom there. So we're going to look for a sacrifice bunt to see how you would do that. We do. Okay. So I see it. I see it. There's okay. A we've got a sacrifice. And, and we hear so a lot about these these days. Okay. So same idea how to get in position to do a bunt. Huh? Actually lay it down. Bunt is placed by the batter to advance a runner or runners on base. On the sacrifice bunt, you get into bunt position when the pitcher makes the first move toward the windup. All right. That's terrific. Thanks. Today, we will look at the newest baseball game software, some new CD-ROM baseball products, and an interactive system that lets you manage a major league team. Now, we're going to begin by looking at another computer system that helps you become a better baseball player. This one is called BioVision. Everybody, from the backyard ball player to the pros, knows there's always room for improvement in the swing. Now there's BioVision, a company that uses state-of-the-art computer modeling to analyze each and every aspect of a batter's stance and movement. High-speed cameras record the motion from strategically placed reflective markers. We're able to then digitize the exact position of those markers through time and then bring that to uh, that data into the computer and see a 3D model of it and able to break down that motion more accurately. Information is passed through a Sun workstation to a silicon graphics workstation loaded with BioVision's specially designed software. A 3D model of a generic person is scaled to the actual athlete. Then motion is tracked for each one of the body parts. Also we're able to look at um, since it is in a digital form the, the velocities, rotations and position of any body part we're able to look at the velocity of your hands, the velocity of the bat head, the, the end of the bat, or the velocity of, of, say, your head. Are you moving your head around too much? Another BioVision feature lets you add lines through the different body parts. This analyzes the rotation of the hips and shoulders, which indicates what kind of power you're generating through the bat. After a BioVision analysis, the player receives a videotape of the session. The company plans to develop a portable system in the future for use during pro baseball spring training camps. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
Now, if you're really a serious baseball fan, you want serious baseball software. And we have two humdingers to show you. First of all, to help us out, Kenneth Miller of Miller Associates and over there, Todd Wade of the Voyager Company. Kenneth, let's start with you. When you have baseball for Windows, tell me about it. Stuart, baseball for Windows is the only baseball game for Windows. It's actually four integrated programs that give you total control over this world of baseball. So it's really a strategy kind of game, right? Exactly. Okay. You can be commissioner, manager, coach, uh, all in one okay, game. Okay, show me how it works. Absolutely. Baseball for Windows, here, here's a, a picture of uh, of famous Forbes Field mm -hmm. at the moment that Bill Mazeroski hit his uh, 1960 homer to okay. win the World Series. Baseball for Windows is about big league players. Let's take the Pittsburgh roster. Let's say you wanted to add a little so punch to this was to the 75 roster. Pirates we're looking at. Exactly. And you're going to go draft a heavy hitter here to help out the team. Huh? Add a little punch to the outfield. Let's say we wanted him to back up at first base and come from our league. Mm -hmm. Boom. We've got them ordered by slugging oh, percentage. They're, they're the guys you could go for. George Foster. We could certainly use a little pop on the okay. team. Um, baseball for Windows uh, draft gives you no, there are no limits to the number of teams or leagues or uh -huh. divisions that you can create. And, uh, and you can even have your own expansion by importing players from the Bill James Electronic Baseball Encyclopedia. Okay, so what are we looking at now? Here's the second program, uh, Stuart. It's League Manager, and uh, it'll, it fully organizes you your You set out your own schedule, huh? You can load your own schedule. You can create it yourself. Uh -huh. Be your commissioner. Wow. It gives you total access. Let's let's look at this uh, box score here. Mm. All the stats, more so stats. This is really the, stats yeah. heavy. This it's game, right? It's got it's, everything. It in has it. everything, in and it. it's factually all the stats based on on real historical teams. Absolutely, and the, and the players uh, perform as you would have them play in uh, in an actual major league okay. game. Can we see what that would look like? Absolutely. Let's play some ball here. Yes. Oh. Here we are. Uh -huh. Bronx yeah. Bombers, huh? home of the Bronx Bombers. Oh, yeah. You can draft from uh, teams from uh, any decade. So all this your is favorite the 27 players. Yankees and the 46 Red Sox. Exactly. Mm. The dreaded, uh, dreaded yeah. New York club of 1927. Yeah. Teddy uh, ball game, Ted Williams, mm -hmm. has uh, looks like he launched one in the top of the first. So we're going to see if New York can come back. So we're back in the bottom of the first and the Yanks are up. So you just click on these icons. That's the way the action is. There's a swing away, the pitch, wide of the mark, and Coombs walks. Nice. All right, so he's down at first. Now, once you're on first, you've got some options. Let's uh, take a look at Coombs. He's, he steals 15 bases there, so he might have some speed. So Let's send you're him. the manager. You're going to make a decision whether we should try to Absolutely, steal. Absolutely, and I'm going to send him. Okay. Here he goes. The pitch Hit. swung on strike, and Coombs is stealing. Throw down to second. The tag, the throw safe. Safe, okay. All right. So we stole second. In. Stole second. Koenig's up now. Let's see if he can drive him in. Loop to right toward the gap. Moses after it, spears in a one hop, Coombs rounds okay, third. Now you got to make a decision, decision whether to send him home. You got seven seconds left to make that decision. Well, Let's go for time. it. Okay. Let's send him home. Now you're going to throw home to, to get him, or are you going to stop that run from okay. going to second base? Let's throw home to try to get him. So you're playing the manager on both sides Absolutely, here right now. Absolutely, I am. And and we're going to send Koenig down to second to try to draw the throw okay. to, to get the run. Wow. Sure. Let's send him down to second. Now you're going to let the run score. Sure. Let's let the run score and cut the ball off. Coombs scores. York cuts it to second, and he's tagged out. Not, Not even close. close. But right. they got the run, and now the babe is up. Try uh -huh. to get ahead of the game here. High fly ball to deep center. DiMaggio's back on the track. Two away. He <laughs> caught the ball. He tracked it down. Well, not even the babe does it every time. But Lou, Lou is yeah. at the plate. Lou Gehrig, Iron Horse Gehrig. Right. It's rocked high and deep. Get going, Moses. He can only watch Ooh. it go, okay. and it's gone. <laughs> All right, you like that play? That's great. Kenneth, we're out of time here right now. Baseball for Windows, and I could be playing you. We could each manage our own teams. Like Absolutely. That. That's terrific. All right, we're going to move over here and visit Todd and take a look at we have what we have from the Voyager Company. And this is Baseball's Greatest Hits, and show me how it works, Todd. Sure. It's really a collection of audio and all sorts of stats that makes you takes you back to great moments. So this is kind of historical stuff, and you have, uh, what, audio clips and great moments? Right, and some video clips as well. All so right, show me. So let's jump in and look at a great moment from the 30s. That's the year, of course, that Lou Gehrig said goodbye to baseball. That's right. We just had Lou over there. Right. And now he's saying goodbye. Take a look. You've got Mel Allen, who does an intro. But mm -hmm. let's go ahead and take a look at Lou Gehrig saying goodbye himself. Oh, great. That is a classic piece of film. Sure. The studio was filled just with people yeah, to see the goodbye. Yeah, we've all seen this. You've been reading about a bad break. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Well, we all remember that. And he goes on to talk about yeah, what it means to, yeah. to be on that great team. Okay, what else could we look at? Tom? Well, we could take a look at some other greatest moments. So let's click down here. 
And let's choose one from the 70s. Okay. How about uh, Hank Aaron? Sure. Hitting one out. 15th home run. Right. You remember he's at 714 here on this day. Well, that's great. So it actually pulls up the box score at the right. time. Right. Now we'll listen to a little bit of Mel Allen giving you a, a, oh. an introduction here. It's like having the Hall of Fame in your in your Mac. No that's right. No legend looms larger over baseball history than Babe Ruth. But as the 1974 season gets underway, Henry Aaron is about to step from under the Babe's huge shadow and claim his greatest record for his own. So we brought Mel Allen in to record each of uh -huh. these reminiscences of himself. So do we actually have the play-by-play -play of the home run? We sure do. We have it on radio, but let's take a look at the, oh, uh, yeah, video, at the video. Okay, so we're loading up. Here we go. Henry Aaron in the second inning walked and scored. He's sitting on 714. Yeah, great when you know what's going to happen. <laughs> And it's great when he gets mobbed here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Turn that off. This now, is really great. Just a talking video baseball encyclopedia. Right? right, and then you could take a look at his stats as well. Uh -huh. And we can bring up the any of the players that were there. And you can mm -hmm. even go back and take a look at Babe Ruth's stats and uh -huh. see how he did it. Well, I think that you can go on and you can listen to hours of audio, but you can also, and it might be a good way to finish, play a game. Oh, really? Uh, this is on the, the trivia side, so uh -huh. it's, uh, it can be tough, so I warn you. Trivia. Uh -oh. Let's start the game. Don't go, back, don't go back too far now. No, we'll, uh, okay. we'll keep it fair. We'll make the home team the Chronicles. Why not? You pick okay. the visiting team. <laughs> All right, visiting team, the computers. The computers. <laughs> All right, so this is a trivia game in the guise of a sort of baseball game. That's right. Now okay, we can take so single. Top of the first. Top of the first. Let's pick a single. We'll start off okay, easy. Okay, easy question, right. yeah. All right. He was not elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. Jeez. Oh, boy. I'd have to say Babe Ruth. All right. Sounds like a good choice. All right. How about it? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer actually was <laughs> Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio. Uh, so oh, we strike is bad. Okay. Suppose I were right. What would we say? Home well, run? we would have gotten a single. Oh, a single. I was going for a single. You're right. All right. Okay. So we'll take the next batter and we'll All go right. for a home strike. run this time. Uh oh. That's a really you. hard one, huh? Frank Baker earned the nickname Home Run for his two round trippers in this World Series. Oh, give me a break. 1911. Okay. <laughs> well, we've got one out of four chance. <laughs> That's what I was counting on. And we score. Just like in school. Hey, I got it. Okay. <laughs> nice not too job. Bad. All right, very nice. So it's called Baseball's Greatest Hits on CD-ROM. Right. Okay, thanks. Now, if you think you could manage a big league team, you can give it a try with the new interactive network. We saw it being used at a recent Giants-Cubs game at Candlestick Park. There will always be fans happy to just watch the players on the field, but a growing number are getting hooked on a new way to be a part of the action. The interactive network merges computer technology with FM radio signals to create a game that allows you to score points by predicting what the next play will be on the field. It makes you like you're the 10th player on the diamond. You know, instead of just being nine players, it's like you're the 10th person. It's like you're the manager. You're predicting, uh, you know, the hit and runs. The it's almost like you're predicting when the batter's going to swing at the pitch. That type of thing. So it makes it it makes it much more you know interesting for for, for the viewer and um, for the fan. You can take your eye in control unit to the ballpark, but most people play along at home while watching game shows, baseball, or football on TV. Yeah, all right. The game unit lets you call up statistics on each player, so your prediction is more than just a guess. You know when you're right, and you know when you're wrong in a matter of seconds. You be, when when the play happens out there on the field when when I hit the ball or when anybody hits the ball or the ball is pitched, you know right away whether you're right or wrong. Data jockeys at the IN Control Center lock in your prediction and feed out results. They're using a graphic user interface and a mouse to uh, build messages which are sent uh, out over the air into our devices. And in the case of the baseball game, um, our producers will uh, say that uh, that at bat was a ground out it sends it out over the air into our control unit, which then compares your prediction with what our result was and gives you points based upon the correctness of your prediction. Interactive Network is available in San Francisco and Chicago, with plans to expand to seven additional cities in the spring of 1994. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson.
Baseball game simulations have gotten a lot better over the past few years, and we're going to show you the two best baseball action games. Here to help us out are Daniel Jung of Accolade and over there Don Daglo of Stormfront Studios. Daniel, let's start with you, and we have here Hardball 3, and show us the great features of Hardball 3. Well, Hardball 3 is the third in a line of very successful baseball products, and the premise has always been great playability. Um, with Hardball 3, what we tried to do is make it more realistic by adding real baseball players, real statistics, mm -hmm. real ballparks, and we've even added uh, real play-by-play -play commentary by legendary sportscaster Eric, Alan Michaels. Can we Michaels. watch and listen? Let's go into a, an exhibition game here. We'll hear some of Al. Welcome to Hardball 3. I'm Al Michaels. At the plate, number 24, the center fielder. This is Giants and Braves. Three, this is the Giants and the Braves. Hitter. And I'm at bat right now. Well, okay, actually, so I'm pitching. You're pitching. Okay. I'm pitching, and I'm going to go So ahead. the computer's playing the batter? I'm playing against the computer right now. But, I mean, I could be playing outside. offense That's against cool. you. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. This is a one- or two-player game. Or we can actually manage only and have the computer okay, play by so itself. Okay, so you've got to decide what pitch you're going to throw me. That's correct. I'm going to do an off-speed. And I'm actually going to try and hit the batter. Woo. A little bit inside. inside. <laughs> He's crowding the plate. Let's, okay. let's pitch one right down the line, and we'll watch him get a hit. Fly ball into left field. And that's a home run. run. Out of there. All right, well, the, no, not the computer was well done. The computer was well right? done. Okay, and if I'm the batter, I could be deciding how I'm going to swing and what I'm going to go that's for correct. also. That's correct. One of the nice features about Hardball 3 is the fact that you can customize just about any part of this game that you'd mm -hmm. like. We can go in there and modify each of the players. So, for example, if we wanted Will Clark to... Uh, be a power hitter even more so than he is uh -huh. now. We can change just about every one of these attributes. Got to, if the real Giants could do that, huh? That's <laughs> we okay. wish. Um, you can go in there and change positions as with the uh, so you can pitchers. Put, put your lineup up and do you the can whole set your lineup up. You would do. There's also a uh, a nice feature in the season play, where you're going to uh, play a full 162 game season. Uh -huh. And the unique feature about Hardball Three is that halfway through the season, the computer will pick the best players for the All-Star really? game based upon the accrued stats uh -huh. up to that point. So if you're playing the league, um, you want to make sure that you're always on the alert just to make sure that your players uh -huh. make the team. Um, going in there, you can select a full schedule. Mm -hmm. You can see all the games at a glance. Or if you select a team, for example, San Francisco, I can, exactly, I can see exactly what teams they're going to play against the month. Huh. And we can go ahead and select one of the games. Okay. Actually, we must select that one. And we can go ahead and start our season off. Okay, so first game of the season, Giants Braves. Welcome to Hardball 3. I'm Al Michaels. Up at bat, number 25, the center fielder batting 2. We're playing 50. in Cincinnati, it looks oh, like Cincinnati, right now. Oh, Cincinnati, it's yeah. okay. And the you first game of the pitching season. again or batting? I'm pitching again. Okay. okay. Yeah, we have awesome. a different view this time. Before, we are kind of looking at the yeah, center field You can camera. alter the view. You can either do it from batter or pitcher view. Uh -huh. Let's go ahead. Actually, I'm, I'm batting. Oh. oh, you're batting now. I'm batting now. Oh, well, the you first you game of the season, we're, uh, we're playing okay, Cincinnati, so, so we're the visitor. Oh, so you, you decide whether to bunt. You can pick your strategy and so on. Okay. One, one pitch. Foul ball to the right. Swing a little late there, Daniel. That's correct. Let's try again. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and see if we can actually get a hit here. Okay, so the count's one and two. There we All go. All right. Left center. You got some wood on it. Caught by the uh, left but it's an now, if we wanted to, we could actually go into an instant replay. Uh huh. We can show this play over again. Let's At go the ahead. Plate, number 51, the right and we'll go ahead and go down to strategy. Uh -huh. And we can see that play right over again. Right. And if we wanted to, we could actually save it to a highlight reel huh. for later viewing. It's almost like the 11 o'clock newscast, the best play of the day. Hardball three. I got to move on. Thanks a lot, okay. Daniel. All right, let's go over here, Don, and take a look at Tony Larusa baseball. And what do you do with Tony LaRusso? Let's just go through it. Well, the whole idea behind Tony LaRusso baseball, when we started on the project five years ago, was to take the best of the graphic games that uh -huh. have ever been done, the best of the stat simulations, and try and both somehow cram them in together into one package. So this is an action game and a strategy exactly. game. Exactly. You can do both. In fact, if we come and we look at the ground rules over here, mm -hmm. we can see that the options were given. We have the option to play, manage, mm -hmm. or have the computer do things. And down here you'll see if we get down to where we're actually playing it like a video game, we can turn on or off having the computer control the fielding, the throwing, so the base running separately. you can have as much separately. control as you want or you can back off as much as you exactly, want. Exactly, okay. because sometimes you find that your control of those games gets better in, in, at uh -huh. different levels. Now we can also do things, I'm recreating the Toronto versus Atlanta 1992 World Series here, uh -huh. but just for a twist, we throw, thought we'd put it in Ebbets Field, <laughs> which hasn't existed for a lot of years in okay. Brooklyn. Now the wind's blowing out here at eight miles an hour. We could actually bring that in 
if we wanted to, or we could take it back so out. So you can control all the conditions of the game. We have everything, humidity, temperature, all those things wow. affect the flight of the ball. And I take it the, the engine knows what's going on, and it's less likely or exactly. more likely you hit it out of the park and so on? Now here we're picking it up in the first. We've got a runner on first. I already put the steel sign on for him okay. before he came over. So is this computer against computer right now? Right. I'm actually managing both teams. So okay, I could you're the manager, but not the action. Exactly. I could control the strategy at this point. Uh -huh. Now it so happens the next batter walks, so what I could do here is I could come down, yes. come to the signs, uh -huh. and say, well, let's go for the double steal. Let's live dangerously. Hmm. So now we'll put the, the mouse down and we'll see what they do once I've given them that direction. Okay, so you, you've, you've told them to do a double steal. Mm -hmm. And there they go. So we've got the pitch. Catcher comes so he goes up. goes to third. And out at third. So at my second. strategy yeah. backfired. I was a little Not too aggressive. Not so good. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of things added to the game. We've and got if I was playing defense, I could have decided to where to place my fielders and exactly. that kind of stuff to go against you. You have complete defensive control. The game will actually simulate a 162-game season. Uh -huh. It also will select an all-star team in the middle of the uh, season. Now, you notice there, as, as the ball came down, there was a circle around the outfielder. Yeah. That's a key aspect because catching fly balls on computer games has been a problem for years. Yes, it is. That's an invention. What it does is it lets you see where that ball is. Mm -hmm. You have a sense of where the ball is coming down and how high it is. So it, you it helps you move it. your. So you would actually move your fielder over there to make the catch. Exactly. Okay. Whoops. So we're still in sort of autopilot right now. Right now we're having the game uh, play against each other, and we're just having the managers watch and decide if there's anything we want to do. Uh -huh. So I could play against you, and I could manage my team, your team, or I could actually swing, and you could actually pitch. Exactly. So on. You can play it like a video game at one mm -hmm. extreme, a passive game at the other, or manage in the middle and have it any of those ways. Okay. Tony Larusa, baseball. All right. Thanks a lot. That's our look at baseball software. Stay tuned for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, Apple grabbed headlines this past week with the launch of the Power Macintosh line. Its new computer is based on the PowerPC chip developed jointly by Apple, IBM, and Motorola. Apple says the three new Power Macintosh models will run native Power Mac applications faster than Pentium PCs. And Microsoft says it will roll out Power Macintosh versions of its Microsoft Office business productivity applications. Look for the Power Mac versions of Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Fox Pro, and Microsoft Works this summer. Microsoft developers say they're already seeing significant speed improvements in Word and Excel for the Power Mac. All this will ship Power Mac versions of its PageMaker and Freehand programs in the next 30 to 60 days. Performance is two to ten times faster than on the fastest Quadra system. Operations such as screen redraw, rotation of text and graphics, text flow and reformatting will be virtually instantaneous on the Power Mac. Meanwhile, Adobe Systems announced it will buy Aldis, and the headquarters of the newly formed company will be located at the current Adobe facility in Mountain View, California. Adobe Chairman John Warnock will be CEO of the new company, and Aldis President Paul Brainerd will hold a seat on the board of directors. Plans are in the works for the first Pentium clone. NextGen Microproducts says the NX586 chip will run the same software as the Pentium, and the 60 megahertz version will cost about $300 less. Computer makers Tangent, Computech, Atasys, and Lucky Computer will install the next-gen chip in their machines. Dell brought out six new Intel 486-based systems with prices starting at $1,499. The central processors range from a 25 megahertz SX to the top-end 66 megahertz DX2. Telecommunications company U.S. West has formed a company called Interactive Video Enterprises. IVE will design, develop, distribute, and promote interactive television services based on the development of broadband distribution networks and multimedia communication systems. Datatech Software has a new program out designed to help you get a job. It's called You're Hired. It's got a resume builder feature for people with writer's block, along with a contact manager and job interview preparation program. You're hired for Windows, sells for $59.95. Software Ventures Corporation has started selling its Microphone LT communication software for the Macintosh on the commercial market. It used to be available only to modem manufacturers. Microphone LT is designed to help the novice user navigate through online services, email systems, and databases. The learning company has released new Windows versions of its popular Reader Rabbit and Math Rabbit programs. Both programs are designed to help children develop reading, math, communication, and thinking skills. 
And a new survey says one out of every four American households now owns a personal computer. The Software Publishers Association survey also found that 37% of newly purchased home computers have a CD-ROM drive and 76% use Windows. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson.